You've probably been hearing a lot about Pennsylvania's pension crisis lately. Pension, pension, pension system. The state's two largest public pension systems report unfunded liabilities of roughly $66 billion, a debt that all taxpayers will eventually be on the hook for, and one of those systems, the Public School Employees Retirement System, or PECERS for short, is being investigated by the FBI. Those are the problems. As your boss or your spouse or heck, even your mom probably told you, pointing out problems is easy. Fixing them is hard. So let's explore some possible solutions. Number one, claw back retiree benefits. More than a few people have thought about rewinding the clock to 2001 and reversing the late night money grab that helped contribute to the current pension crisis. Here's the problem. For legal and political reasons, and for want of a time machine, it's never going to happen. So let's move on. Number two, switch to an entirely 401k style system for all new employees. If you're in the private sector and you have a retirement account, odds are it's a 401k. These accounts place more of the onus on employees with smaller contributions by the employer. Pennsylvania could do this, indeed it already has a 401k style option. Expanding it could minimize future costs. Alas, it would do nothing about the existing debt. Number three, offer a lump sum payout in lieu of pensions to state employees already in the system. This is actually fairly common in the private sector, particularly with old pension systems that declare bankruptcy. It's terrible for the retiree, but it does reduce the pension debt. That said, extending this kind of policy would essentially be an admission by state officials that our pension system is broken. That will be a bitter pill to swallow. Number four, begin taxing retiree benefits and use the proceeds to pay down the pension debt. This is the third rail of Pennsylvania. Next, that all politics. Just ask Scott Wagner. He pitched a similar idea, albeit one that would eliminate property taxes, during his 2018 gubernatorial run against Governor Tom Wolf. Spoiler alert, he lost that election. Number five, combine PCERs and SIRs into one system. This was one novel idea to emerge from the 2017 reform push, although making it a reality could be pretty tough because uh, because of the logistics of untangling the two pension systems' complex web of investments and relationships. As one Piecers employee told me, it's like a marriage. A lot of marriages end over who's paying what. Just imagine doing that with billions of dollars. Number six, switch to a more low-cost passive investment style. Passive investing is a strategy that is exactly what it sounds like a buy and hold approach that seeks to minimize trading of relatively stable assets, uh, such as an S&P 500 index fund. That is a, a bundle of stocks composed of the 500 largest publicly traded American companies, roughly representative of the economy at large. Historically, such investing has consistently returned gains of about 7% per year. That's a lot better than Piecer's current track record of about 6.4% returns. And you minimize administrative costs because you're not buying and selling all that much. Of course, many of the existing agreements tie up Piecer's money for many years to come, so this is not a solution that could be rolled out quickly. Number seven, ban investment of public money into hedge funds and ban lobbying from outside the system. One actuary described the process of investment managers trying to woo piecers and sirs as, quote, almost a beauty pageant. This high stakes courtship that happens between pension fund employees and private money managers creates an opportunity for ethical and possibly criminal misconduct. It also just doesn't look good Although insiders say it's somewhat simple-minded to ban hedge funds altogether because 
they can be part of a well-diversified portfolio and they offer exposure to the kinds of investments that ordinary people don't normally have. Number eight, set more realistic investment goals. So Pacers currently assumes a future rate of return of 7.25%. That figure is called a discount rate in finance circles. As you may remember, Pacers, its actual rate of return was 6.38%. That is a problem, and the optimistic assumption can lead the system to take unnecessary risks to try to make that a reality. Of course, changing this assumption comes with its own nasty consequences. It would require Pennsylvania to contribute more money into the system, something that very few politicians want to do because, well, it would mean raising taxes or cutting other programs. So there you have it, eight possible solutions to Pennsylvania's pension woes. There's a lot more to this story that you can read on penlive.com. In the meantime, please consider supporting your local journalists.